Thank you for the introduction. So I will, um, I mean, the work I will present is a joint work uh, with Rubin Chen, Kai Durkop, Florence Belchevuk, Sebastian Buck, uh, and Yu Rao So I will begin by introducing some background about uh, metabolite identification. So first, metabolite are a small molecule inside biological cell and they can perform various functions such as energy transport, signaling, and defense. They can also have some inhibition or catalysis activity. And uh, there have been diverse applications about metabolite in biomedicine, pharmaceutical, and biotechnology. And uh, one central task in metabolomics is to identify the metabolite that are present in some biological sample. So metabolite identification uh, generally rely on tandem mass spectrometry data, and these data are produced by fragmenting uh, the molecule and then recording the mass and the relative abundances or intensities of the molecular fragment. And so as a result, we obtain a, a tandem mass spectrum, which is like a plot with a set of peaks, and uh, each peak uh, represents like the intensity and the mass to charge ratio of some molecular fragment. And given some this tandem mass spectra, we can then use some metabolite identification approach to identify what is the molecular structure of this molecule. So in this work, we decided to use a machine learning approach for solving the metabolite identification problem. And so we consider as the input uh, data as a set of tandem mass spectra. As in output, we have the set of uh, molecular structure and we consider a training a set example where we have like a set of example for which we both know the input and the output. And the objective is to learn a function f that map a tandem mass spectrum to a molecule. And the state of the art machine learning method for solving metabolite identification is called CSI finger ID. And this method is a two-step two approach. The first uh, step consists in using some SVM classifier to predict molecular fingerprint. So there is like one SVM is used to predict each molecular property. And after given the predicted fingerprint, uh, there is a comparison with molecular database. So like the molecule in this molecular database are first um, transformed in some molecular fingerprint and then there is scoring function that, that compute the similarity between the predicted fingerprint and this molecule. And uh, the output of the method is just the molecule that has the highest score. So I will present now the method we used in uh, this work. So we decided to use an input-output canal regression approach. Uh, so it's a framework for learning mapping between structure and input and structured output. So what I mean by structured output is like when you have some tree data or some graph data you want to predict in output. And in order to encode the internal structure in this output, so in a case of mo molecule, this method is using a kernel function ky. So this, the value of this function is just like measuring how similar are two molecules y and y prime. And just for example, we could measure this similarity by using the molecular fingerprint of the molecular graph. And the interest of using this kernel is we can benefit from the kernel property that just tell us that there exists a fi some feature space f y in a function uh, phi y that can map the output to this feature space. And so all the value of the output kernel, they can just be written as some inner product in this way. So I will describe like the main step of the input output kernel regression. So I represented the function f that we want to learn. And I saw the function phi watt that maps this output to this feature space. And so the regression problem between x and y can be decomposed in two steps. The first one is like consists in learning this function h. So the function h is like just approximating the output feature vector. And once we have this approximation, we go back to the original output space by solving a pre-image problem. Globally, we want to learn like the inverse of the f y function, phi y function. So I will now present the main technical element of this method, but if you are interested to have more detail, you can uh, see in our paper. So like I said, the first step consists in approximating this function h from x to fy. And we will use some regression method, but like you can see, it's not just scalar value in output, it's some vector value. So that's why we use some uh, kernel ridge regression method, but generalized to the case of vector value function. 
So I just wrote the optimization problem. So there is two terms in this optimization problem. The first one is just we want to minimize the least square error with the feature vector we want to learn. And the second one is just a regularization term in order to over, over, avoid overfitting. And we decided to use some kernel-based method. So kx is here in input kernel. And we have some um, parameter alpha we want to learn. And so if we just replace this expression in the optimization problem and try to find the optimal alpha, we obtain the sol solution written here. So in, in this solution, um, the matrix phi y l just is just a matrix whose vector, uh, whose colon has a feature vector. And the kxl is a vector just computing like the kernel value between the training set and the example x. And if you see, it's very similar to the kernel regression solution, only the first term is changing. So we now go to the second step, the pre-image step. So the second step consists in determ determining the pre-image of h of x by f phi y. So how we do this? Uh, we just consider a set of candidate molecules uh, from some molecular database, and we try to find the one with image nearest to h of x. So it means we map all these candidate molecules to the output feature space, and uh, we compute the distance between h of x and all these candidate molecules. And then we just rank this candidate molecule from the shorter distance to the largest, and we give a ranking for this. And so the predicted uh, molecule will be the one with the shortest distance. So here I just replace the solution of h of x that I showed previously. And so this is how the primate problem, right? And so just some remarks. So we can see that we don't really need to know explicitly the training output feature vector. We, we can just use a kernel trick in the output space. And after I didn't say much how we chose this um, candidate molecule in general, we just uh, use some molecule from molecular database like PubChem or okay. Cake. But like this database are very large, uh, we prefer to reduce by trying to first estimate what is the mass of the unknown molecule or what is its molecular formula. And like this, we can only consider the molecular formula in PubChem that has the same molecular formula or a similar mass. So like I say, we have different, uh, we have an input kernel and an output kernel in this method. That's why it's called input-output kernel regression. And I will now present which kernel we used in our approach. So for the input kernel, we use some 24 input kernel that has already been proposed in the literature. So the first one is a probability product kernel, and it just model a tandem mass spectrum as a set of two-dimensional probability distribution. And these two dimensions refer to the mass and the intensity. And we also define some 23 kernel based on the fragmentation tree. So fragmentation tree, in fact, is just a way of modeling the fragmentation process that happens in a tandem mass spectrometer in a tree shape. And like I show an example, and so in this tree, each node corresponds to a peak of the tandem mass spectrum. And like the edge in this tree, they correspond to a loss in the tandem mass spectrum. And we can estimate this tree based on the, on the tandem mass spectrum. And after this, we can just define a lot of kernel by comparing different elements of the tree for example, we can compare if the nodes are similar or, we, or the edge, and we can also compute some paths in the, in the tree and then compare the, its paths. And the last one is try to align the fragmentation tree and compute a similarity from this. So I will not give more detail about this, it's just a different category we have. And uh, so we have 24 input kernels, so we decided to combine them in a rather than using a, a single kernel. So we try to have a linear combination of this kernel. And we try two approach uh, for defining the weight in this linear combination. So the first one is very simple. It's called uniform MKL. And you're just giving the same weight to all the kernel. So it's very simple, but in general, it performs quite well. And the second one is align F. And this one is learning the weight uh, by trying to maximize the alignment between the input combined kernel and the output kernel. So regarding the output kernel, we decide to use a molecular fingerprint information. So just uh, to say that molecular fingerprint is just a way to encode the molecular structure with a vector. And uh, each value of this uh, vector is corresponding to some specific molecular property, like for example, 
atom type or aromatic ring. And we define three output kernels, so a linear, polynomial, and Gaussian kernel over this fingerprint vector. So I will now present the experiment we have done. So we consider approximately 4,000 uh, tandem mass spectra from the public GNPS spectral libraries. And we perform a tenfold cross validation experiment. And we just pay attention that sometime we can have some uh, spectra that correspond to the same molecular structures. Uh, we put them in the same fold to avoid to have some bias. And in the pre-image tape, we use the molecule in PEPCAM that have the same molecular formula. And for the evaluation, like if you remember, I said that in the pre-image we have this ranking when we rank from the shorter distance, shorter distance to the largest. So what we do is, for the test example, we look what is the rank of the true molecular structure in this ranking. And we do this for all the test examples. And uh, as a measure of performance, we just compute the percentage of structure that has been ranked uh, lower or equal to k. And for the value k in general, we're interested only in some small value of k, like typically between 1 and 20 because we are not really interested in if the true molecular structure was only ranked at the 100 position, for example. So here I just show the result for the IOKR method for using all the different input and output kernel. So the heat map is just showing the result. So is a percentage of correctly identified metabolite at the position one, so the rank one. And uh, so the different row is corresponding to the three output kernel and the uh, colon corresponds to the input kernel. And I just show like the different kind of category of input kernel we have. And what we can see is uh, that the one that performs the best is among the single kernel is a node bus kernel, the bus bus kernel, and also the probability product kernel that I introduced. But we can also see if we look at the two multiple kernel learning approach that they are really um, increasing the performance compared to any of the single kernel, we obtain really better results. And if we compare this approach, surprisingly, the simplest one, which is just giving the same weight, is the one uh, performing a bit better. And if we look at the output kernel, there's not big difference. We can just notice that in general, using a Gaussian kernel is a bit better. So we then compare with CSI finality, which was the best performing method for metabolite identification until now. And just uh, this method is using a scoring function for comparing the candidate fingerprint and the predicted fingerprint. And we just choose to compare two of them. So the first one is uh, very simple. It just counts the number of molecular, common molecular property. And the second one, it just, it weight the number of common molecular property by some degree of certainty of the predicted molecular property. So if you are more sure that you predicted a good molecular property, you will give a highest weight. So yeah, I will not give more detail about this, but this is the idea of this scoring function. And this is the one that performs the best for CSI finger ID. So in the table, I show the result for CSI finger ID and IOKR for the top one, top 10, and top 20. And in the figure, what I did is like adjust compute the difference compared to the best performing method until now, which was the CSI finger ID modified plot. So like this, we can see like the relative improvement compared to this method. And we can see that with IOKR, when we use a linear output kernel, so with the kernel in blue, we don't really improve compared to the previous computing method. But um, on the contrary, when you use the Gaussian output kernel, we see that we can have some improvement of two points. And so we see that this method, this IOKR with Gaussian output kernel and a uni MKL combination in the input is obtaining the best performance. So the second comparison we did was to compare the running time. And so for this, we just fix some training example and some test example. We also fix the parameters. And we didn't take into account some uh, pre-computation like the fragmentation tree, the input kernel and the fingerprint because it's something that is common to the two methods. And what we can see is IOKR, whatever the output kernel is only taking 40 seconds for training and is like 7,000 times faster than the CSI finger ID for the training. So it's quite a huge difference. And uh, the reason is just that for the CSI finger ID, you need to train one SVM for each molecular property. So I mean in total, it's like 3,000 SVM to train. 
And if we look at the test time, we also see that um, IOPR is faster, but it's not so, I mean, the difference is not so big compared to the training time. And also we can see that depending on the output kernel, the, tr the test time is not the same. So the only reason is because in the, in the pre-image step, we can avoid some kernel computation if we use a linear kernel, because like this, we can directly consider the feature vector and not the kernel. In conclusion, so we propose to solve the metabolite identification problem using a structure prediction method called input-output kernel regression. Uh, we show that our method improves the metabolite identification performance compared to the computing method. And we also see that we can reduce considerably the running time and in practice it allows to run on a single computer. We can train and test the model on a single computer and we don't need to use a cluster for this method. And one perspective is uh, we would like to address the case of the metabolites that are not present in the molecular structure database because for the moment in the pre-image we are limited to just find the, the closest molecule in some database like that. Okay, thank you for your attention. <laughs>